Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today I got one that I'm really interested in. So basically- <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> I am interested in this one. I'm interested in all of them, but this one in particular got my, this article got my I know. interest peak on it. Um, how the housing market has changed from 80 years ago to from 70 years ago, 60 years ago, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk about how what the average price was in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, what it needed to make. You know, I just find that interesting how things changed so rapidly later on. Right. So stay for the whole video because I think this one's gonna be a good one and I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. In the meantime, do me a favor, if you like these kind of videos, subscribe. It really helps out the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss anything. So, with all that said, let's talk about it. Okay, in 1940s, the average cost of a home was $2,938 adjusted for inflation dollars. That is equivalent to $64,372.84. Now, wrap your head around that. It, we almost might have to say that again. Okay. So, in 1940s, <laughs> Okay, we're gonna, right, we're gonna walk here. <laughs> All right. In the 1940s, uh -huh. the average cost of a home was $2,938. Okay. Adjusted for inflation uh -huh. in 2024 dollars, that is equivalent to $64,372.84 today. Okay. So, why isn't that house $64,000? <laughs> Go ahead. Try to answer that one, and I'll continue. It's a hard question. It's an interesting question, for sure. All right, <laughs> so if we think about it, the only factor that increases prices isn't in, is not the, just the inflation it's, uh, side of things. Supply and demand. Supply and demand. It's 21.91% times higher than it was 80 years ago. And if anybody can answer it in this, watching this video, comment. Be fair, comment below. Cause because this is going to be a good one. I want to, I, I, this is an, I like this. This is very, very interesting to me. And wait till, wait till we bring it on. I'm tell you, I read some stuff the year and I'm like, what? You know? All right, let's, huh. let's, let's go to the 1950s. What, does everybody have a dog? Well, it's so nice out today. Everybody, I mean, it's winter, you know, and it's just a little chilly in this, but the sun is nice and toasty, so. All right, home Everybody's prices outside. from the 1950s. Uh-huh. The U.S. Census data reported the average cost of a home in 1950 was $7,354. In a span of 10 years, from 1940 to 1950, the average cost of a home jumped, like I just said, 7,354, yep. according to the census data. That's equivalent to $93,602 with today's adjusted inflation. So. In the 1950s. Thank you. In the 1950s, you're, talk, you're talking about the houses should be 93,602. Uh-huh. In today's, you know, today's inflation. That's not even close. No. Well, I mean, it basically said the same thing again, right? We're just talking a price with an adjustment. Now we're getting into the hundreds. Yeah, so basically prices increased 12.73 times since the 1950s. Right, and then... Okay, let's hang out here for a second. Yeah, so it went from 21 times, that's what I was looking for. It went from 21 times to 12 times. So it slowed down a touch. All right, so read 1960s and I'll tell you where it's gonna get really interesting. I think I know where it's gonna get interesting. But, so from 1963 to 1970, the average cost of a home jumped from 19,300 to 27,000 according to Fred. Good old Fred. Mm -hmm. The 1960s average cost of a home jumped significantly in the early years with the cost of homes finally surpassing $10,000. I'm just, it, it's just to me. you see where I'm going with this? Yeah, 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 I see where you're going with this. Wait. But I'm just kind of going in my brain going, all right, a house costs $10,000. You can't get a car for $10,000. Right. So basically, that's equivalent to $193,470 in today's dollars. Yep. 
So the average house would be 193,000. We know it's higher than that. By the end of the de decade, house costing Americans 27,000, which is 213 dollars, 213,457 adjusted for inflation. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets interesting. Go ahead, read the 70s. All right, at the beginning of the 70s, the average price of a home was 27,000, but at the end of the decade, a new home now costs 74,200. Whew. The 1970s showed the overall increase of nearly $50,000 from the beginning of the decade to the end per Fred calculations. Mm -hmm. Between 1970 and 1975, the average cost of a home jumped $27,000 to $40,900, which would be $213,457.27 and 233195 dollars and 38 cents in 2024, so, respectively. So basically, the 70s wasn't really kind to us. No. Okay, I was still in grade school and stuff, so. Right. I mean, I can't really talk I'm, about- I'm holding my comments. I'm pulling my comments, too. <laughs> All right, listen, the largest jump occurred at the end of the decade. Prices reached 74,200, like you said, 1979. Mm -hmm. It would be 313,506, adjusted for today's inflation. Right. Now we're getting more to the price we, that we are now. What we are now, right. The only thing that I'm not seeing in here is the square footage of what the houses were. Now, if we just go back and just look at some history, it just depends on where you live, you know, depending on what state you're in, so on and so forth. So like our average 70s era home mm -hmm. was around 1,100 to 1,490 square feet, roughly, give or take, you know what I mean? But that mm -hmm. was like, that was more, that's more than not. Mm -hmm. You know, you're figuring you're gonna be around 1,500 square feet. So. so, now let's, and I'll give you my opinion. Go ahead, do the 1980s, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about All this. All right. In the span of only four years, from 1984 to 1988, a home in the U.S. increased $43,000 on average. The 19, uh, excuse me, 1980, one of the biggest surges in home prices occurred in terms of the numbers at the start of the decade compared to the numbers in the transition to the 90s. Over the course of 10 years, from the start of the decade to the end of it, the average cost of a home jumped from 73600 to 151200 So we're kind of getting into the era where I bought my house. Right. So basically, what I think, my opinion, we continue walking, I think what screwed up the housing market was the 1970s and early 80s. Yeah. Okay. That's where everything went bad and never got better. So comment below. Tell me what you guys think. I know this is going to be like hundreds of comments. <laughs> yeah. And I know where they're going to go, but I like to. I wanna... Yeah, it'll be good. Let's, I love this. So let's see. Let's see what these. Uh, I love reading everybody's comments. So we appreciate it when you do make a comment. But think about it. In the 1940s, the article continues going saying in the 1940s and 50s, one person working in the household Yep. The other person staying home, raising kids, uh -huh. having three kids, going on vacation, going to the movie theaters, buying food. Yeah. You know, and I know things cost less back then, but they made less money. So I know right. all that stuff. Okay. Right. It makes sense. I mean, I remember in the 80s getting gas and, you know, we, we didn't pull out dollar bills. We were looking for pennies, quarters, dimes and nickels. Yeah. Because you know, gas was, you know, 85 cents, 90 cents when I got my first car. And and that's that's the whole thing is. I don't think we will ever go back there. Now, I'm doing inspections for people, and they're saying, okay, yeah, it's me, my brother, my cousin, <laughs> and my friend. We're buying this house here. Right, yeah, co-share. <laughs> you know, it's right, like... Right, because they're pooling their money together to be able to afford the house and living together. But That's a tough spot. The days, the days of one person... I mean, there's exceptions. I of know. course. Surgeons and whatever, you know, there's, there's exceptions. But for the average the, person. Right. The day-to-day -day average majority mm -hmm. is two, two incomes. You know, we've but, done videos on that. Yeah, but the problem is, too, the two incomes. Now, it's going, it appears like it's going towards three incomes. Right. Well, I mean, kind of circling full back with the 
post-pandemic or pandemic and post-pandemic times where we had these massive increases in home prices, the, you know, the value of the homes went up so rapidly, salaries didn't keep up with it. This is why we keep talking about a balanced, normal, stable market without super, you know, interest rates. We don't want them to spike up. We don't want them to drop down way low super fast. We want everything to go nice and slow, ripples in the ocean, right? Right. Because we need time for, and then, you know, for wages to catch back up again, slowly but surely. We, you know, think about trying as a small business owner, like you, me, and, you know, many other people are having to pay our employees. And let's say we had to double their salary because we had to, because the home prices doubled. Right. That would put a lot of people out of business. Right. But and the cost of goods would go through the roof. But, but think about it, 1940s and 1950s, equivalent to today's dollars, mm -hmm. okay, people could afford a house with one income. Now it takes a minimum of two incomes right. for the average person. And, and now I'm noticing it takes three, even four incomes yeah. to qualify for a house. Well, I mean, this is the position that we're in and, you know, the government's trying to figure out how to get, you know, the first time home buyers able to get into affordable, affordable house. housing right because they're trying to solve the problem this is where you've heard some craziness talking about instead of a 30-year mortgage going to a 40-year mortgage and i did hear something kind of interesting like we're the only country excuse me we're the only country that has a 30-year note this is like europe or england or something like they they have adjustable rate mortgages and they all adjust Right. I was just, yeah, exactly. So there's other places like we, we kind of go, ooh, to certain things and we want certain, we want the, the, the cake, but we don't want the, you know, the bad stuff that goes with it. There's countries that the rate, like you said, adjusts every 10 years or five years. They go back in and say, OK, well, what's the new prevailing rate today? But that's the life of the loan. It just here's your next five years. Good luck. And I heard something about the China market and nobody quote me on this. I'm, if I'm understanding from what I heard, somebody just told me about it. Like you get a hundred year mortgage in China. Uh, I heard then, this. And then if you pay it off within the hundred years, you get to keep it. But if you don't pay it off or something happens, it goes to the government. I mean, I, I don't even know if that's true, but. I have no idea. But I have heard the 100 year something or other, and then it was in one ear and out the other for me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying basically is the days of one, it's so sad. It, it's, it's, it's very difficult right now. Now, people want to stay home, raise their kids, you know, homeschooling is becoming popular. Yep. And, you know, everybody started, you know, working from home, which helps. But that's changing too. Yeah. Yeah. We, you know, businesses need people to run. At the end of the day, we still have business, most businesses run with us, human people. And only certain things can be done remotely. Yeah. You know, and the, they say the productivity is better when you're, you know, at the office and so on and so I don't know. I don't know any of that stuff, but I mean, it kind of makes sense. There's, you know, I know at my house, there's so many distractions. You know, with, you know, it's just too easy to go. I need to run to the, get to the fridge real quick and grab a snack. You know, you're like when I was on the job still, it's like we didn't, we had a cooler, you know? Yeah. And it's like, that's your snack. So when you ate them, they were gone and it is what it is. You just deal with it and you kept working but, until it was quitting time. Yeah. I just think things are going to get worse, especially with AI. Do you know that I made a phone call to find out about something and I thought I was talking to a person, but I found out later on I was talking to an AI. Yeah. But I sent you that video, remember from Google, um, I mean, I think I sent that thing to you a couple years ago and it was five years old and it was AI making a hair appointment yeah, for the assistant, that. remember? And that was five years old, three, two or three years ago. So like this AI is not new. It's just new to us in the past year. Yeah, but I think it's going to grow quite oh, a bit. And it's I, the next, I, I think it's, it's going to affect next a lot of people's jobs that <laughs> you need three incomes to buy a house. Yeah, it's the next era for sure. And there's, we're going to have to adjust to this and the types of jobs that we do because AI is able to do so many of these data entry things. And, you know, it's just, it's crazy what it can do. So let me ask you this, in your opinion, I already gave my opinion that you're going to need two, three, four incomes to buy a house. And we're going to become a nation of renters in some way. 
okay? Unless, you know, your parents give you a house or whatever. You well, know? yeah, yeah, there's always those exceptions. There's, there's exceptions. Do you think we'll ever go back to those affordable prices adjusted for inflation that people could buy a no, house? No, I, I just don't, th I, I, I still, it's like saying that I think taxes are gonna go backwards. I, I just don't see it. Yes, there's markets that come up and there's markets that go down. So that's when you take advantage of an area when a market comes down or it, it's called gentrifying. So let's say a bad area is gentrifying, which means it's turning over. You know, that's where a lot of investors go in and they buy stuff up and they tear down and, you know, an, an old building or like a strip plaza like the one down the street and they put new apartments there because that's what people can afford right now. So I just don't think waiting to buy things are going to be cheaper. I had so many clients that were like, no, Bill, it's not the right time for us to buy. We're going to wait. You know, when it was the pandemic, it was just too hot. But I had other clients that didn't. And most of those clients have sold already because they made so much money. They stayed in their house for a couple years and then they sold and they sold quickly. We didn't, we priced the house right and they sold very quickly and they made a lot of money. So, I mean, everybody's situation is different, but I, do, I don't think we're gonna go backwards. I just don't see it. We, we may take a few steps back, but I don't think we're gonna go into this crazy recession dip housing wise you know, where we're going to have these, I've heard, you know, the 50% slashes, you know, 25% yeah. slashes on home, home value. No, there's a difference between value and price. You know what? In 1940s, I wouldn't want to live in 1940s because of the war and stuff. Right. But the 1950s, man, it sounds fun. No cell phones, you know, going right? out. Right. It's just like, oh. you can afford to buy a house, you work on your car, you don't need a freaking... Uh, PhD to work on your car. Right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh. I think 1950s was a great decade. I wasn't born in 1950s, but <laughs> um, but I just think, you know, they had a lot of fun in the 1950s. I don't know. Tell me if you were born in 19, grew up in the 1950s, was it a good time to enjoy yourself? Anyways, that's today's video. If you can figure out a time machine and go back. <laughs> Let us know, please. We appreciate it. <laughs> you can buy a house cheaper. Remember, please do me a favor, subscribe. It really helps out the channel, and we will talk to you in the next one. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.